I'm ophthalmologist Ashley Brissett. Let's answer some questions from Twitter. This is Eye Support. At Evan Murphy asks, how does LASIK eye surgery even work? Like what? How does that just let you see? Well, I'll tell you how it works. I perform LASIK and I even had LASIK done on myself. What LASIK does is it helps to remove microscopic layers of tissue on the surface of the cornea to better direct the light as it enters the eye so that it's focused in your retina. The biggest risk is risk of infection, although it's quite rare. Less than one in 1,000 people would ever develop an infection. At JJDGMN asks, what do eyeballs feel like? I mean, the closest thing I can think that it feels like is a grape. If you peel back a layer here, you can see how delicate this tissue is. So if you were gonna squeeze an eye, it would kind of have the same squishy consistency of a grape. It's filled with a jelly, which is called the vitreous. And then the tissue layers of the eye are really, really thin, almost like this thin outer layer of the grape. When we're learning how to do surgery, sometimes we practice certain techniques on things like grapes. At Junior Barnaby asks, how do ophthalmologists know babies need glasses? One way we can tell that babies need glasses is their eyes are crossing, turning in, or turning out. Another reason we can tell that babies can't see or might need glasses is if they're rubbing their eyes a lot. Sometimes babies rub their eyes a ton because they're trying to stimulate vision. Another reason is if babies are tilting their heads or if they're not fixating on objects. Usually by about three months, babies should be able to see a toy or an object and kind of fixate on it and follow it if you move it around. At Mark Swisher asks, what is the anatomical purpose of eyelashes? Eyelashes actually exist to help trap all the dust, pollution, bacteria, allergens that exist in the environment so that they don't hit the surface of the eye. It's actually proven that eyelashes should be a specific length. If your eyelashes are too long, it's trapping too much of that in the environment and it can sit there and cause irritation on the eyes. That's why it's so important to be washing over your closed eyelids every morning and evening to remove all that's been trapped in the eyelids and lashes. At trans Regina L. asks, my right eye twitches. Is this anxiety or nervousness? Twitching is what's called myokymia. Eyelids twitch for a number of reasons. The most common is because of lack of sleep, too much caffeine, or stress. The muscles that are around the eye are very delicate and very sensitive to stressors. At our Dab Dow asks, what are the dangers of wearing contact lenses while sleeping? I always sleep with contacts on. I don't see any side effects so far. I have seen terrible damage to vision from people that sleep in their contact lenses. Our eyes get their oxygen from the environment. And when you wear your contact lenses for too long, you deprive the eyes of oxygen, and that can leave you really prone to developing an infection. And you can develop what's called a keratitis, which is an infection on the cornea, which is the surface layer of your eye, it can lead to scarring and permanent damage to your vision. At Kevin Clark NW asks, why does eyesight deteriorate with age? Eyesight deteriorates with age mostly due to cataract. It happens to all of us as we get older. The cataract is the clouding of the lens, which is on the inside of the eye. This gets more yellow, big, and thick as we grow up. And that changes the prescription and also causes the vision to be blurry. Cataract is actually the world's leading cause of blindness, but it's reversible with a surgery. It's actually the most commonly performed surgery around the world. I go inside the eye, remove the cloudy cataract, and then put a new lens implant in its place that has your prescription in it. It's an artificial lens but it's really well tolerated, it's biocompatible, and can help to restore vision. Ad Keelnut wants to know, what does 2020 vision mean? 2020 vision refers to how we measure your vision on a vision chart. So most vision charts are set for 20 feet away. If you can see the 2020 line, that means that at 20 feet away from the eye chart, you can read that line, and we refer to that as normal or perfect vision. About 35% of the population can only see that 2020 line without glasses or contact lenses. So say if you had 2050 vision, which would be this line, here, what that refers to is that what you would be able to see at 20 feet being this line here, someone with perfect vision would be able to see at 50 feet away. Some people can even have better than perfect vision. So we would refer to that as 2015 vision. If you were standing at 20 feet from the eye chart, the person with normal vision would only be able to see what you see if they stood closer at 15 feet to the eye chart. At no amano thoughties asks, what does legally blind even mean? Like, can you be illegally blind? Like, can you get arrested for being blind? So legally blind refers to vision that is 2200 or worse. 2200 is this big E on the chart. If you're standing 20 feet away from the vision chart, this is the only letter that you can read, while somebody with perfect vision would be able to stand 200 feet away and also be able to read this E. This would be vision of 2200. At Nolsey27 asks, do carrots actually improve your eyesight or have my parents been lying to me my whole life? Carrots actually improve your eyesight. They have beta carotene, which is an important part of the vitamin A pathway. There's actually big studies that we've done that look at nutrients and 
how they affect your vision. The main nutrients that are recommended are vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, lutein, and zeaxanthin. These vitamins that are recommended are really important in the metabolic pathway of the cells that are in your retina, which is that vision sensory organ of the inside of the eye. At Axie Huss wants to know, how do people know they're colorblind? You might know it's not right because you'll start to sense that there aren't as many differences in colors. Most people who are colorblind, it's not that they can't see color, it's that colors are much more muted. We can actually test it though. These are what are called Ishihara color plates. So if you're colorblind, you might not see this red number six in the sea of green. Similar to this one, you might not be able to see the green S in the sea of red. The most rare form of colorblindness is blue colorblindness. So you might not be able to see the ton here in the sea of blue. At Farabee14 wants to know, seriously though, where do eye floaters come from? Eye floaters are a natural part of the eye's anatomy. Your eye is filled with a jelly, it's called the vitreous. This jelly starts to liquefy as we grow up. When it liquefies, you get clumps of cells and collagen, which are in this jelly, that clump together and then cast a shadow on the retina. So the floater that you're seeing moving around is just kind of a clump of cells in this now liquefied vitreous jelly, casting a shadow in the back of your eye. At Miss Claire 18 asks, where do these tears come from? Tears come from the lacrimal gland. It's a gland that is in the upper outer corner of your eyelid. The purpose of tears is to help keep your eyes lubricated. Our eyes need to be lubricated for us to see clearly through. That's why people that have dry eye feel like their vision is blurry and their eyes feel really uncomfortable. At Meg Stand asks, I hate having to get my pupils dilated at the eye doctor. What is the purpose of that other than giving me a migraine? The reason we need to dilate your eyes is to take a look inside the back of your eye. As you can tell, the pupil, it's really hard to see through it if it's small. So by using the chemicals, phenylephrine and tropicamide, they help to dilate that iris muscle so that I can actually see into the back of your eye. That's why it's so uncomfortable when you leave the office, your pupils are really dilated, so much light is getting through. The way that I can see in the back of your eye is by using a light on a microscope device such as this, which can then magnify the view into the back of the eye. We can tell a lot about your total body health. So I can learn if you have high blood pressure, if you have diabetes, even sometimes some autoimmune conditions. This is showing a normal eye. This is the retina, which is like the back wallpaper lining layer of the eye. These are all the blood vessels, which look really normal and healthy. Here is the nerve. That's the cable that connects the eye to the brain. That sends the visual signals to your brain. In contrast, this is actually a photo of an eye with diabetes. There's some bleeding spots. The blood vessels look what we call tortuous, which means that they're a little bit twisted. And all of these yellow deposits here are swelling or what we refer to as exudates. As you can imagine, all of this here can actually cause damage to the vision. At C Party 25 wants to know, what's the difference between an ophthalmologist, an optometrist, and an optician? So an ophthalmologist goes to medical school. They perform any medical procedures and they do surgery on eyes as well, such as LASIK, cataract surgery, glaucoma surgery. Optometrists go to optometry school. So they do general eye care, glasses prescriptions and contact lenses prescriptions. And an optician is someone who makes the glasses. At Serena Mails asks, are eyelash extensions safe? So my answer is sometimes. If you have the lash extensions on and they're too long, it's keeping too much of the bacteria and dust and pollution that gets trapped in them. That just leads to bacterial overgrowth and eventually infection. I also see a lot of damage that people get from the chemicals that are used in terms of gluing them onto your natural lashes. And sometimes I've seen people's natural lashes fall out because of an issue with an allergy to the glue. The lashes can grow back, so if your eyelashes fall out, it takes about two months for them to come back. If you're really going to play around with beauty trends, only do it for a special occasion and then give your eyes a break. At Leon Paz underscore FFXIV wants to know, what's the difference between near and farsighted? Nearsighted is when you can see up close, but it's really difficult to see far away. That's actually the most common prescription error that most people have. Farsighted is when you're able to see somewhat far away, but really difficult seeing up close. At Alexis K97 at Question for optometrists out there. Why do I see shapes and colors when I rub my eyes? What actually is that? The eye is filled with a jelly. And when you press on the eye, the jelly then presses on the retina and it stimulates it, similar to like if light entered the eye to stimulate it. This is where those rods and cones, those photoreceptors are. So it's why it's important not to be rubbing your eyes because you're kind of just squishing your eyeball. At Dodgson is here asks, I've never understood how marijuana can be an effective treatment for glaucoma. Like how is extreme paranoia supposed to help your eyes? Marijuana is not a recommended treatment for glaucoma. Yes, marijuana can have a very small, very temporary effect of lowering your eye pressures. We know that high eye pressure is a risk factor for glaucoma, but marijuana only lowers it for a really short period of time and not enough that it would actually be of any benefit. At Yash Archive wants to know, how did the eye tests work? I mean, they do so many seemingly random things. The first thing that we test when you come for an eye exam is the vision. So they'll flip back and forth between the different 
prescriptions to see what prescription do you actually need. What these lenses do is they help to focus the light so that it lands right on the back of the eye so that it brings everything into focus for you. Then we test your eye pressure. That's that puff of air test that everybody hates having done. When the air puff test hits the front of the eye, it's actually measuring how much it decompresses the front of the eye and the rebound. And that gives us a general sense of the pressure on the inside of the eye. We know that high pressure in the eye can lead to damage in the nerve. The nerve is the cable that connects your eye to your brain, and that's what gets damaged in glaucoma. And the last thing that we're gonna do is look at your eyes underneath a microscope, which is called a slit lamp. It's this big machine, you're gonna put your chin on the chin rest, so we can actually look inside the back of your eye. If the nerve is getting big Bigger, that's a sign of glaucoma damage. At phenomenal underscore Nissa asks, is the blue light filter actually good for eyes? There was no evidence that using the blue light blockers helped with eye strain with computer use. It was a great marketing tool, but a big research study came out that showed no benefit for eye strain using the blue light blockers. Most of the eye strain occurs because of glare. So you can get an anti-glare cover for your screen and that can help. At dpalmer216 asks, what kind of drugs is Zuckerberg on that his pupils are always dilated? I never noticed that and I don't wanna get on his bad side, but there's a few reasons why your pupils dilate. One is if you're in dim lighting, and that's to allow more light to enter the eye. Another reason people can dilate is from some medications or some drugs, stimulants such as cocaine, MDMA, sometimes even some antidepressants. It's a side effect of the medications. Lastly, your pupils sometimes dilate if you're in love or if you're aroused. So if you see somebody that you love, the pupils dilate, and that's because you get a release of dopamine, and the dopamine leads to the dilation. At Just Simply Sally asks, what happens when you look directly at the sun? So you can sunburn your eyes. UV damage can occur on the eyeballs. It can cause something called photokeratitis, which is a sun damage to the surface of the eye, but it can also cause damage to the retina in the back of the eye. It damages those fine photoreceptors, which are used for sensing vision. If you look at the sun for say longer than 90 seconds, that can cause this damage. Flavor of Gabby asks, did you know that we actually see things upside down, but the sensors that connect our brain and our eyes flip the image? Yes, I did know that. And not only does it flip the image from up and down, it also flips it from left to right. Thinking of the eye like a camera, it actually travels through the entirety of the eye. The first thing it hits is the cornea, which is the clear cover layer of the eye. Then it travels through the lens, which helps to direct the light rays into the macula, which is the back part of your retina. This nerve here is made up of 1.3 million little axons, which are connections that allow the image to be distributed through the brain all the way into the back of your brain called the occipital region. So by having lots of different input, lots of different connections from our visual world, that helps to provide depth of field, depth to focus and gives you really great clarity for your vision. Next question, is there a thing where your eyes can change color? My eyes have never been this light before. Your eye color is pretty set by about one year of age. Your eyes can appear to look different colors. It usually has to do with the amount of lighting, colors that you're wearing. The reason why people have different eye colors is the amount of melanin or pigment in their iris, which is the colored part of the eye. So people with blue eyes have less melanin and people with brown eyes have more melanin. At only one, LVM asks, how do people become cross-eyed? We call this strabismus. Strabismus means a turning in or a turning out of the eye. You have to be able to see clearly for your brain to use the two eyes together. And if one of the eyes isn't seeing very well, then the brain starts to ignore one of the eyes, ignores those muscles, and the eye starts to drift or turn. So those are all the questions for today. Those were some really great questions. My biggest pieces of advice, make sure you're washing over your closed eyelids, eating well, and just stay healthy. Thanks for watching Eye Support.